What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And here we have another new vlogging camera from Sony. And it's so secret that Sony didn't even tell me the name of it until it showed up at my door. But basically this camera is going to be a vlogger's interchangeable lens artistic camera. That's what they said. So basically anyone that wants to go from like an iPhone or a point and shoot camera to something that has a little bit more creativity to it. You can swap the lenses. That's what this camera is designed for. And I don't usually talk about price right off the bat, but I think it's important to talk about because this camera is $699 and that puts it in a weird price bracket where it kind of cannibalizes some of other Sony's cameras that are like this. I never actually said the name of this camera. It's a ZV-E10. It's right, there you go. This camera is kind of a mashup of an A6000 series camera, so like the A6100, A6400, A6300, A6000, with the same sensor, so it's a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, but it's also a mashup of the ZV-1, so it has a lot of the same design language and basically all the same features that the ZV-1 has. Comparing all three cameras side by side, you can see that it's a little bit smaller than an A6100 on the right, and comparing to the ZV-1, they look almost the same. They're using the same button layout, the same design language, right down to that huge mic array on top. And compared to an A6100, you can see that there's no EVF. But the nice thing is it does have that articulating touchscreen that the ZV-1 has, which is really nice for vlogging because you're going to be able to see yourself. It also has that really nice clip-in dead cat to stop wind noise that the ZV-1 has. So I'm just talking into the camera mic right now with the little dead cat on top. And if you flip it, you can hear me talking from back here too. So it's perfect for vlogging because it's got those mics set up in there like that. And it obviously has the flip screen, the articulating touch screen, which you can see yourself while you're vlogging. And it's got the red outline around it, just like the Sony a7S III, which I think is really awesome. And it also has a little red tally light to tell you when it's recording. Yesterday, I actually had the chance to go out and shoot the new Ford Bronco. And I took this camera with me and shot everything on it. So let's check that out. So this camera obviously doesn't have IBIS, but it does have active digital stabilization. And when paired with a lens that has OSS, it's actually really good. And that's how I got all these shots handheld with the Bronco montage. You can shoot up to 4K 30 FPS, but you can also shoot up to 120 frames in full HD, just like the A6000 series of cameras. But the nice thing is it also comes with HLG and S-Log3, and you can also get gamma assist on that. So it's like previewing with a LUT on it, like a Rec. 709 LUT. The button layout's very simple on this camera. They ditched the mode dial for a mode S and Q button. And like I said, it has that really nice articulating touch screen and it's really nice to have on this camera. So like the ZV-1, it has the multi-interface hot shoes. So you can put all of Sony's digital mics on top of it, but it does also have a mic jack input as well as a headphone jack. It has HDMI out as well as USB-C in. And the cool thing is just like the ZV-1, it can be used as a webcam directly through USB-C. So you don't need any extra like HDMI capture cards or anything like that. When it comes to autofocus, it has the best in class autofocus, the same thing that Sony's putting in all of their cameras. So amazing eye and face detection in video as well as photos. And as you can see here in video, it had no problem tracking my face, even with sunglasses on. It was able to see my eye and track my face. So one other nice thing this camera has that the ZV-1 also has is product showcase mode. So basically you can put anything up in front of you. It's gonna focus on it. It's gonna jump back to my face. You put anything up in front of it, it's gonna ignore my face and go to whatever's in front. This is good if you're trying to show products off while you're talking and you wanted to focus on the product in front. Sometimes it takes too long, especially if you wanna use face detection, this is gonna work the best. So when it comes to photos, I didn't take a ton of photos with this camera. I did do a little shoot here, doing some cosplay stuff with my friend Marissa. And obviously you can see here, the eye detection is working perfectly, even when it was backlit, but it's the exact same image quality you're gonna get from an A6100 or from an A6400. And I'll put a montage of photos in here that I've shot with those cameras.
So while I was editing this thing, I realized that I was shooting everything in manual. I know a lot of people that are gonna buy this camera are gonna shoot in automatic. And this camera has a few cool options when you shoot in automatic, like this background defocus button. So you push that and it's gonna automatically defocus the background by changing the aperture and adjusting the shutter speed automatically for you. And that's pretty nice if you don't know how to really use a camera and get that manually yourself. It also has this like skin softening filter that's on high. It probably looks a little fake, but do I have a nice smooth complexion? That's, that's all that matters. I just wanna jump in here real quick and talk about my good friends over at gearfocus.com. I'm using gearfocus now for about a year and a half and I think it's probably the best place to buy and sell used camera gear. And if you have any camera gear lying around, you can probably make some extra cash if you put up on Gear Focus. So once you set up an account with gearfocus.com, you can start listing your items right away. You need to make sure that you take some good quality images of the actual image you're selling so the buyer knows exactly what they're getting. Then fill out the description, category, and price you're looking for to get from your item. And once you're done, your item will be listed. It's dead simple. The other awesome thing is that the buyer and seller can actually message each other to communicate about the item. I've sold a ton of stuff on there now and it's way better than selling stuff in person. The other nice thing is Gear Focus only takes a small 3.5% transaction fee, which is way better than eBay's insanely high fees. So check out my store at gearfocus.com. The link is in the description. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this review. I think that if you're looking for a camera that gives you a little bit more creative control other than like a point and shoot camera and your iPhone, so you can put different lenses on this. There's so many different lens options that can fit on this camera because it's a Sony E-mount. So you've got all of Sony's full frame lenses can work on this as well as APS-C. And you've got Sigma coming out with some awesome lenses as well as Tamron. And yeah, there's lots of choices to make more creative options with this camera. And I think that, you know, for the price of 699, it makes more sense to get over the A6400 or A6100 or even the ZV-1. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. ZV-E10. <laughs> that's the name. <laughs>